But like every week, we are here to talk with you about AEW Dynamite. And quick recap for you. Tonight's show, we kicked off with Mox versus Big Bill, which was a surprisingly fun match considering neither of them. Those are insanely fun. Um, we end up having a video a little bit later on night where Marvez and the BCC challenge Claudio Danielson challenges to team with Claudio versus Big Bill and Sarks for collision. Um, then there's a little bit of face off between Phoenix and Marx and Kingston and Claudio. We had a Renee segment with Roddy in which it's Adam Cole interrupts him right away and Adam seems happy, but Kingdom not as happy. Um, he's begging Roddy not to go through with this, but he's going to go. He's going to break Max's back, and he's going to win the belt. We had Tony Schiavone introducing Don Callis and Takeshita, which obviously doesn't really ever get to really ask too many questions. There's always an interrupting interruption, or somebody takes over right away. Yeah. He says, we beat Kenny twice in one week, and when you're better than all the other aces and you beat Kenny Omega twice... You're not just an ace, you're the alpha. So that is Takeshita's new nickname. But they're not done. They want to take everything. They want to take more from Kenny and they want to go after his heart. And their next target, and they unveiled the painting, is Kota Ibushi. Yep. He actually... Uh, what he has a... Takeshita with a sword to Ibushi's neck. And then Cal's ends up stabbing the painting with the, the screwdriver. But the biggest thing about this whole thing is Kenny being called a pathetic cuck during this promo. <laughs> Renee had a little interview with Hook, which we never really usually get to see Hook talk. He talked a little bit tonight. And in this instance, it was really about more so the storytelling of Orange Cassidy comes in. He's like, well, you got to be mad about you're here. You can wrestle. You're a champion. I was a champion. Orange Cassidy is heartbroken. Yeah. Poor man. We had the women's four-way match to determine who would face Soraya at Grand Slam between Nala Rose, Britt Baker, Hikaru Shida, and Tony Storm, in which Tony Storm is able to sneakily get the win by a rolling up Brit. After we see Renee with Ray and Ruby, and at first they seem like they're congratulating Tony. Says, oh, you did it without us, all on your own. But to know, Tony's lost everything to Surya. Her friends, her title, her mind, and she's going to lose at Grand Slam as well. We had Lasex Gods yeah. in the ring. When two friends trying to promote a match that's coming up, I will say they did not do this nearly as well as Adam Cole and MJF did as best friends. Mm hmm Yep, see, that, I, that's where I was, that, that's where I fell asleep. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like, okay, I remember everything. Oh, no, yep, now I don't remember things. Yep, that's where I fell asleep. I think that I knew internally that I wasn't going to care about that segment. <laughs> it was the friendly, but the stare down and all that, the usual stuff. Um, at one point, Sammy does say that he's going to win because he has to get out from behind under Jericho Shadow. Um, and then they're gonna shake hands, they'll hug, and then they'll win the tag titles, and then there's another actual stare down. Uh, they did, they came out to the ring together, they did not leave together. Then we got the MJF video from, it was supposed to be from after last week, uh, where he's in the trader room after he injured his neck. Talked about if Roddy wins, he'll break him. He isn't afraid of Joe, he says he's gonna choke Joe out, and then he does the greatest thing ever and does a sign of wrath promo because he's talking to Samoa <laughs> Joe. That is perfect. Then we had one end up waking up Mr. Range of Motions over here because we had Adam Hangman, sorry, Hangman Adam Page versus Brian Cage. Cage, Page, too many things. Um, Hangman's about to go for the buckshot lariat and that's when Swerve's music hits. And causes a distraction. Yeah. Oh, dude. They need to have Brian Cage versus Christian Cage versus Hangman Adam Page versus Ethan Page inside of a versus steel cage. Ethan Page. Oh no, it's it's a it'll be a tag match. Page and Page versus Cage and Cage in a cage. 
<laughs> you have not seen the memes for that yet. No. Oh, the, the, maybe maybe that meme started before you really got into it or you got played out because yeah, it's it's yeah, been page and page versus cage and cage. I like it. Book it. That's when you got woke up. Brian Cage hit a German suplex from inside the ring with Adam Page on the outside of the ring to the inside of the ring, and it was goddamn nasty. Hangman's actually able to pick up the win with the dead eye, gets on the mic, uh, starts to talk to Swerve, saying, Hey, you want to fight, but you end up sending him down here? I thought you had balls, but apparently I, they're inside of Prince Nana's hat. Crown? Yeah, they're inside of his Burger King crown. <laughs> uh, Swerve says he gets picked Wyndham where he ends up setting up for in his home of Seattle for Wrestle Dream. So we have two matches for that card, and both of them are ones mm -hmm. I'm excited for. But he says Hangman can't get comfortable. He's not going to let him be comfortable. And that's when Brian Cage and all that attacks from behind before the Young Bucks slide into the ring, do a double super kick to Cage. And then they wait forever behind Prince Nana as he dances. <laughs> He's going for so long. And they're just this behind him. Awkward. And then just being able to have them in frame behind him reacting, it was it was awesome. I had no idea how long it was gonna go, but it was one of those things that just gets funnier and funnier the longer and longer it went. You got him, let him go, because Prince Nana was cooking, man. <laughs> 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 Renee for her 17th segment of the night was with Daniel Garcia in which she asked him about Sammy and Jericho wrestling next week you know JAS stuff and he says why isn't it about him he's gone viral uh, more than anyone else in the last month from the company and blah 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 why isn't it about him Don Cows comes in to agree Garcia puts his finger to his lips let's shush him and then does his dance yeah I want a Daniel Garcia versus Prince Nana dance off. No. <laughs> it's not. Kyle's as supposed to be an offended, just calls it money and he still chases after Garcia. <laughs> I love that. He's like. He gives it hope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this dude just humped at you. Because in my mind, I'm like, what if Sammy turns heel by having the rest of GAS help him defeat Jericho? Like, trying to think of other ways to you know, spin that off into something for everybody. But I'm yeah. like, you know what, Garcia can go with Don Callis, that's cool. Yeah, 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 let him do that. I mean, I think Garcia needs to go face, but... Yeah. Mm. But he could be the one that breaks out of that group as a face. Maybe he's not there forever, who knows. But yeah, as long as we get interesting stories for more than just Jericho and Sammy coming out of that. Please. Garcia is too good. Next up, we had Darby and Nick Wayne versus 2.0 slash Daddy Magic and Cool Hand Edge. Speaking of more for the rest of that group, you pointed it out during the match. Fans are still cheering for the second most over Daddy on this roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Daddy Magic gets them cheers. As soon as the match goes to start, Christian does his entrance because Nick Wayne's in the ring. And, you know, he's just talking the whole time. But Darby and Nick Wayne, I think this is where the show might have ran a little bit short because they had the most awkward ending of the match. Where they literally were just staring at each other, looking confused at one point before Darby was able to get a coffin drop on Cool Hand for the win. Christian on the mic, he says he's hired so it gets on the mic, says he wants the Sting Darby tag team match. Because it wasn't him that lost at all in. He wants his tag team partner. So, Sting and Darby versus Luchasaurus and Christian Cage. Does Nick Wayne turn at that spot? It's it's highly likely. I'm gonna say that. It's weird because at first I wanted him to turn and kind of run off with Swerve, and now it's like a Christian story, and I don't know. We'll see. It depends on what AR Fox does. Oh, speaking of, we another way that we knew that match was awkward was because the weird Derby about to do a suicide dive through the ropes where he stops, steps through the ropes, and then jumps off. Yeah. What? <laughs> that was weird. 
And for the main event, we had Samoa Joe versus Roger Strong. Winner faces MJF for the title at Grand Slam. Good job at telling the story. Try to make it where both these guys have a story purpose of winning this match. But it was going to be Joe. It was always going to be Joe. And he Joe, chokes out Roddy for the win. Joe, 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 Joe. And we notice that this match ended with a lot of time after. And you're like, okay, stuff has to happen. Stuff has to fill this out. Joe gets on the mic. He says he's going to take everything you have. Kid. Um, so throwing that back out there again after joe leaves is when adam cole comes out continuing the fact that adam cole wants nothing to do with samoa joe <laughs> i mean he shouldn't want anything to do with samoa joe joe is Look gonna kill him. you joe is gonna kill you he tried to kill roddy tonight <laughs> Uh, speaking of Roddy, as Adam Cole's coming down, check out him. Roddy, who's up in the ring, they're trying to put the neck brace and everything back on. He turns, catches Adam Cole out of the corner of his eye, falls to the mat, acting injured all over again to the point they bring a stretcher out. The oh. kingdom are yelling at him. They're trying to play it off like he just like twisted his neck and turned and like did the whole shot of like a jolt of pain mm -hmm. that took him down. Like he didn't, he didn't do this for Adam Cole. He's not faking this bullshit. Well, but yeah, no, he didn't. Come on. The end of the show was Roderick Strong yelling Adam about a hundred times while the kingdom is telling Adam to get the fuck away. Please change that to his entrance theme. Like just a recording of him screaming Adam would be <laughs> just so good. Adam! <laughs> And finally, when they part ways, as the stretcher and everything's going off to the side of the ramp, and Adam Cole's looking down from the top of the stage, Joe comes out, chokes out Adam Cole, and says he's going to, and he has to go with the point of, he's going to take everything from MJF. Love it. Now, love it. that being said, what was your favorite part of tonight? You're good for tonight. Dude. Um, I liked a whole lot of things on this show today. Um, I like the Prince. So I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to give you the, the, the thing here. I love that Prince Nana got to dance for way too long. <laughs> um, I love Roddy screaming at him all the time. I hope Prince Daniel Nana Garcia stands becomes a TikTok finger. challenge. Yeah. Like putting Prince, or not Prince, but. Daniel Garcia's finger on Don Callis's nose and then the <laughs> and then the humping at him that's great but um, top of my chart I love Tony Storm's new gimmick like the showboating the, the, like, the, the things that she's done has completely changed like her character has personality finally and now I see why people like her. I want fans to start handing her shoes so she has shoes to throw it in the middle of the match. <laughs> yeah, people have to start bringing a spare shoe. Listen, there is no doubt 100% what my good of the night is. Because without going into 100 and percentages all over again, it's the fact that MGF did the Signer Math promo to Samoa Joe for Grand Slam. <laughs> I was crying, laughing, while this man was sleeping. Yeah, and, and Joe definitely sacrificed his, his buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the ramp. No, yeah. do you know what your bad is? for tonight yes yes I do have a bad and it's not even like real big um yeah that that Darby and Nick ending was like a little awkward like they had a good spot in mind but it just didn't work out somehow somewhere in there yeah and that was yeah i didn't like that yeah because i'm struggling i don't really have an ugly for tonight either so 
I'm still trying to think of what to be make the bad versus the ugly. Uh, speaking of bad spots, it really was for me during the women's match, and you might have missed it for reasons. Um, right at the end, before Tony won, Britt hit the worst stomp ever. Like, it went to the back. It didn't look good at all before she got rolled up for Tony Storm's victory. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like Brick, but she's... I feel like she's hit or miss. Now you and lately, it's been a lot of miss. You said you had a lot of things you liked about tonight's show. Did you have an mm -hmm. ugly for tonight's show? Because I really don't. Mm. Man. There wasn't... I really couldn't come up with an ugly for tonight. So We're going to say there, that this show was just not ugly. That being said, you talked about how there are so many different things you like. I feel like it'd be remiss to ignore this. Orange Cassidy's subtle storytelling since he lost that international championship has been golden. People wanted to hate on this character so much like, try to limit it and everything, and it has been somehow slowly developed to be one of the most pure, entertaining, best thing going. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, we hear it all the time. Like, even one, one of our friends that we go to all of the, our shows with says Orange Cassidy could never be a world champion. And I'm like, ah, I think you're wrong. He's got, he's got it. Now, I, I wouldn't say give him a long reign as a champion, but I could definitely see him as a world champion. It's definitely a situation where somebody who has like a chip or something like MJF had, mm -hmm. you make him the champion. He's a champion very, very short time. If it was WWE, you would have the heel use money in the bank to get massive heat by trying to destroy that championship reign like immediately. You could yeah. do it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but yeah. And his character has developed so much. Like, he's probably got the best character development in AEW 